Dearly beloved of the Lord, I'm so happy, happy, happy to be with you again. Thanks be to God for his everlasting mercies, mercies that are new every morning. And the reason why we keep ourselves energized, we keep ourselves encouraged, because we serve the living God, the one that created, that create, keeps keeps making us a people that he desires us to be. And as we offer ourselves to him, I'm glad to meet you again, continuing with our episodes, the biblical personalities, the characters that interacted with God, and they that actually help us, show us what to do and how to go. So shall we pray, Father God in heaven, thank you, that every opportunity you give us is marvelous, is wonderful, and so bless us as we share together by the power of the Holy Spirit in your word. In the name of Jesus Christ, our Lord. Amen. Friends, it's ever a joy to keep reflecting upon God's word. It gives us all that we need. It is our compass direction. It is because compass direction shows us how we should go and where we should go, the desirous ways that God would want us to take. And many, many things, it is everything to us. The way it is written down, it states what we should do. And it also states what we should not do to please God. Now, we have been talking about the person. Friends, I realized that actually there is a lot that we can pick from these biblical personalities. And the name that we are talking about is still Joel. Did I mention that actually is one of the shortest books? Yes. But there are many things that we keep quoting most times. Now, remember that we have a season in the church. We call it Lent season. When we commemorate what our Lord Jesus Christ, the time that he took into the wilderness to reflect on the ministry that I had come to do, taking there 40 days and 40 nights. Now, during that season, we keep mentioning, we keep reading, the portions of scripture. And this is basically in Joel chapter 2 and verse um, 11 following, following. And we so we read something there. I just want us to begin from verse 12. And Genesis, I mean, Joel chapter 2, verse 12, return to the Lord. And we usually read that and say, yet even now, declares the Lord, return to me with all your heart, with fasting, with weeping, and with mourning. So we keep mentioning that every time Lent season comes, the fasting season for Christians. And so we say, and the Bible says in verse 13, and rend your hearts and not your garments. Return to the Lord your God, for he is gracious and merciful, slow to anger, and abounding in steadfast love. And he relents, he relents over disaster. Who knows whether he will not turn and relent and leave a blessing behind him, a grain offering and a drink offering for the Lord your God. Now, friends, we keep reading this many, many times, and I have said something about it before, I say it again, because it has kept encouraging me, it's not for purposes of repetition, but repetition here is for purposes of emphasis, that actually we are going to share a little bit more about these portions, and I've just been reading it in English. Now, permit me, read it in one of the local languages, Luganda here, because we usually read it in most of the vernacular churches that speak, that use the Luganda as a language, and says, Enana ene kakano, bayogela mukama, munchukire, no mtima guamwego na, no kusiba, no kukaba maziga, no kuubala. 
and runyolo kusatu ebe 13 ba 13 era mu yuze emitima ya mmwe so si byambalo bya mmwe muchukire mu kama katonda wa mmwe kubanga wa kisa era judo kusasira alwa okusungola era kwatwa nye kisa era ye jiso butaleta bubi na just desired to read that local language because do when it's next season it comes we read it muyoze mitima ya mmwe so si byambalo bya mmwe muchukire mu kama katonda wa mmwe kubanga wa kisa alwa okusungola akwata nye kisa era ye jiso butaleta bubi now rend your heart and not your garment now this is a message in Joel whose name means the Lord is God and we have taken a little bit more time on this because it is there is something very very special that Joel delivers to us so Joel was showing that he was the spiritual watchman over the people of Judah so he watched over them just like many times we who are in the you know in the in the calling of ministry in the calling of service we are spiritual watchmen now spiritual watch persons on every everybody spiritual watchmen even you a parent at your home you are a spiritual you know in as much as you make provisions for your family you provide food you provide whatever other things but there is a spiritual element in your responsibilities so joel becomes the watchman spiritual watchman over judah and he pleaded them to return he says even now return to the lord with the genuine repentance and so this book of joel talks more about repentance returning to the lord and to rend like in Uganda says muyuze mitima jamwe rending splitting tearing to pieces ripping busting you know you, you, things and you know dissecting into and so rending garments in hebrew was you know it was a custom when someone feels deep deep down in their heart something that they are really repenting they are really sorry what they have done they tear the clothes and to show symbolically that actually something is not right to show symbolically that actually something is going on in their heart and so to show grief it was that to show repentance it was that to show holy zeal it was that it was a nice practice i think it was someone you are talking to somebody someone who feels that they are sorry let there be some something outward to show that actually just like someone speaks something and then you turn and say hey, why did you say that and if it was a hurtful word someone returns and says i am sorry and you look at someone's face and you hear the word that is being spoken and you know so this custom of rending was a custom that actually proved showed that just someone is uh, really sorry on out on the outward also to show you the seer the one with the eyes for the for the you know for the, for the benefit of the, those that are seeing now as human beings we see and god also sees and fortunately for us as christians we know that god sees outward and sees inward it's only human beings that see outward and so this one is important the reason why you also read about king david in second samuel chapter 13 he tore his clothes when calamity befell and when something was not right it was a custom so more than that god desires rending the hearts and why he does require rending of hearts tearing of the hearts is because the danger that is within the outward appearance only the danger there is actually temptation to do it outward when actually inward it's not and that's where the danger comes but otherwise it's a nice thing to show when someone says something you say sorry i you know i am sorry you say it or you uh, or you act it so that someone sees for your information it is very very important to act it so that someone whom you have wronged will know that the, my brother my sister has felt a remorse of this thing but the danger is because we don't see what is in the heart just like jeremiah chapter 17 mentions about the deceitfulness of the heart that's where the danger comes in and so many times 
we abuse it. But doing both is ideal. Say it in the heart, reveal it by the outward actions. So that there will be evident change in your life. And some more important may it begin from within the heart. So that when it is exhibited from the outside, spoken or acted, we shall know that actually it is true. The reason why in Jeremiah chapter 4, verse 4, something that actually I desired when we read it. Jeremiah chapter 4, when he talks about, Joel talks about rending your hearts. Here, Jeremiah says something which is similar for 4, and he says, circumcise yourselves to the Lord. Remove the first skin of your hearts. O men of Judah and inhabitants of Jerusalem, lest my wrath go forth like fire and burn with none to quench it because, the, because of the evil of your deeds. Now, deal with it. Circumcise. And so it says, deal with it at heart. And so this is something that actually I desired to mention this time around. And not just mentioning it to you, but it also comes back to me, rending. And so here, going through the heart, of course, actually exhibited by what is happening on the outside, people tearing their clothes, people putting on sucker cloth, people putting on, you know, smearing ashes on themselves. In the so this is why someone says, I repent in the dust and the ashes. Now, truthfully, if someone did it at heart and did it on the outside, someone would say, okay, someone is showing that actually there's grief within. And we see it. But the danger is hypocrisy that creeps in and so it is the reason why joel says okay there is landing of it is actually most important is the heart and so he was addressing the danger of hypocrisy because hypocrisy is actually empty it's empty worship hypocrisy is hypocrisy mere rituals does not do not matter external performances well it's good to do it you perform it, you ritualize it. That means you do some rituals to show. But most importantly, may it come in or in out. Pray the Lord. May it be in out. And so these days and even then during Joel's time, the world is full of hypocrites. Double life individuals. In this portion, Joel was addressing double-sided people, you know, and they don't, we don't mean what we say. That's the danger. We don't mean what, you know, we act out. And so there is pretense. And so Joel in this portion was also addressing pretense that happens. So hypocrisy is the worst kind of life in in our dealings with other people. Jesus pronounces a very long story. Read Matthew chapter 24 and see how he rebukes the hypocrisy, the pretending, the pretension of, you know, the Pharisees, the Sadducees, the scribes, and those very many categories of people. So this is important that we need to address. And also need to remember that in the Acts of the Apostles chapter five, there is someone who appears there during the early church times because something was happening. They were showing on the outside. They said they had done something, but on the inside, it was something different. This was a couple, a man called Ananias and his wife called Safra. Read about it and you see, they come speaking. We sold everything and this is all the money that we put in. I mean, we were bringing everything when actually the whole thing is, well, the money was theirs, but why deceive? Why lie? And so they were struck dead because they lived a life that was not genuine, that was not truthful. Saying one thing when the heart is harboring another. And this is the danger that we are having. On smiling, someone smiles with you. Someone laughs with you. Someone talks very nicely with you. When actually in the heart, when you, he has an opportunity, he could harm you, could do something bad. And so these, these are dangerous tendencies in people's lives. The reason why Joel is addressing it. So in the church today, hypocrisy is so much. And the opposite of hypocrisy is honesty and authenticity. Being honest 
and being authentic it is a moral principle honesty and authenticity are moral principles so rending hearts is a message of repentance and in psalm 51 verse 17 talks about the sacrifices of god those broken hearts so avoid falsehood and repent now friends more than that joel tells the people return to the lord the lord says and there are lots of benefits turning to the lord with your whole heart i pray that actually god enables us to turn with this we receive abundant blessings in the presence of the lord blessedness happiness joy and so when we truly understand our desire for him when we actually know that we are empty when we actually know that we are nothing before him and so therefore he will empower us he will feel us he will teach us he will encourage us he will lead us out and we shall pour we shall go in the power of his spirit and that's like that is desirous isn't it it's a nice thing so when we draw near to god truthfully and well the point is we derive and experience inner peace inner peace and joy now this is very very important for us for you there are benefits which i may not mention all but you will discover that actually there is a lot that actually benefit when you return to the lord with your whole heart with your entire heart truthfully and Paul mentions something here for us as we read through his word in the book of Philippians, which I am opening here. Philippians chapter 4. Listen to what he says here. Philippians chapter 4, verses 6 and 7. God gives us the peace. You know, 4, 6. And he says, do not be anxious about anything, but in everything, my prayer and supplication with thanksgiving let your desires be made known unto god and verse 7 he says and the peace of god which surpasses all understanding you know will guard your hearts and your minds in christ jesus christ in the christ jesus pray the lord and so this is important that actually there is peace and it's what you desire it's what you need did i remember something about psalm 16 verse 11 now, let me just read it the way it, the Bible talks about it. Psalm 16, verse 11. Now, it's one of my biggest joys. When I talk about it, I feel elated. I feel jubilant in my heart. And it says, you make known to me the path of life. In your presence, there is fullness of joy. At the right hand are pleasures forevermore. Don't you like this? Don't you desire this? In the presence of the Lord, there is fullness of joy. And so friends, fullness of joy is the point. There is freedom from guilt, no spot. So we approach him with confidence because in his presence, there is fullness of joy. The reason why we sing, give me joy in my heart, keep me praising. Give me joy in my heart, keep me singing. Now, May God give you the joy. Draw near. Joy says, return to the Lord. Because in his presence there is peace and there is joy. There is brightness there. There is perfect security before the Lord. Protection. And in 2 Thessalonians chapter 3, verses 3 to 5, please read it there. 2 Thessalonians 3, 3, 5. The Lord is faithful. He establishes you and guides you. So there is safety, perfect security before the Lord. And Joel was telling the people because they were being invaded, there are many things that were happening to them. So he was urging them, perfect security in God. And so I pray that may there be perfect security in the Lord for you and for me. Now, there is receiving the gift of eternal life, and this is what we yearn for at the end of time. And eternal life, we read chapter 10 of John, 
Jesus keeps mentioning many of those things, eternal life, eternal life there. Now, when we draw to him, another thing that actually we enjoy is personal relationship with God. And John 15, he says, abide. The Lord Jesus Christ says, abide in me and I in you. Abide in me and, and, I, and I in you. Now, I discovered a secret, friends, that actually when you abide, you don't need to strive. When you abide in him, you don't need to strive. Because he says you'll bear fruit and you'll bear abundant fruit. And one thing that I mentioned is, there is your joy will be complete. Your joy will complete, will be complete. Now this is this personal relationship, bearing fruit and the joy, like I've already mentioned before, and Joel desired the people to have this in their lives. And then he says that actually in the presence of the Lord, one of the things that you'll find is the provisions. I've already talked about the names of God, and one of the names of God is Jehovah Jireh, depending on what he does. And in Philippians 4, 19, he will supply your needs according to your riches, to his riches in glory. Praise the Lord that God, God actually supplies our needs according to his riches in glory. And so this one, he provisions. Another wonderful thing that you need before there are possibilities. There are possibilities before God. There are possible things before God. There's nothing that is impossible before God. So when you draw near to him, possibilities. Joel knew the secret. Joel knew the secret. The reason he said, return to the Lord and he returned to you. I return to the Lord because there are possibilities. In Matthew chapter 9, verse 23, Jesus looks as at his disciples and says, with God, all things are possible. And I pray that all things will be possible before God and for you. And when you read Genesis chapter 18, verse 14, that is the much earlier book. When God visited Abraham and Sarah, the question to Sarah and Abraham was, is anything too hard for the Lord? I have always asked that, and may I continue asking? May you continue asking, is anything too hard for the Lord? Jeremiah 32, 27, is anything too hard for me? Asks the Lord. And so this is critical for me in the name of the prophet Joel. In these scriptures that we read in Joel chapter 2, verses 12, return to the Lord, because before the Lord, there are great things. May God answer our prayer. Now, I want to mention two more things or three as I end. Before the Lord, in the presence of the Lord, there is strength and power. We get weak. We get devastated. We get broken down. Many things devastate us. Circumstances come so hot. We break down. We cry. We mourn, we grief, we get stressed, anxiety. But in the presence of the Lord, there is strength and power. And so in Isaiah chapter 40, verses 29 to 30, remember those who believe who trust in the Lord are like, you know, like eagles soaring high, you know, soaring. Those who trust in the Lord will, you know, will soar high. And so I pray that actually this God that we serve in his presence, Joel tells the people, return to the Lord. And now here we find that actually there is strength and power. May he give you that power. May he give you that strength. And oh God, give me that strength. Oh God, give me that power. And may he meet you at that point of need because there are so many things that break us. And just like Isaiah 40 verses 29 to 31, may he give us the strength. May he give us the strength. And in Philippians 4, 3, 4, 13, I mean, Philippians 4, 13, do you know what it says? One of the favorite verses that I do, I can do all things through Christ who gives me the strength. I can do all things through Christ who strengthens me. I can do all things through Christ who supplies the strength. May he supply the same to you. May he supply the strength to me. Joel says, return to the Lord. 
Because in the presence of the Lord there is fullness of joy, and part of the joy is this strength, and part of the joy is this power. May he do the same to you, and may God do the same. And so many things, I might not have mentioned everything, but in his presence there is healing and restoration. In Psalms 147 verse 3, he heals our brokenness. In 2 Corinthians, 2 Chronicles, 2 Chronicles 7, 14, if my people who are called by my name return and pray and repent, I will visit, I will come, I will forgive their sins, and I will heal their land. I will heal their land. Friends, I feel like not finishing, but the thing is, when we return to God, there is a full package of what it takes to be secure, of what it takes to be safe, of what to be provided for. So may God, who spoke through Joel, speak to you, speak to me, and may we live our life in the presence of the Lord, there is fullness of joy. Times are so bad, generations are so hard, situations are so hard, brokenness is too much. May he supply you with the strength and the power. May he supply the same. Keep meditating, keep thinking, keep praying, keep returning to the Lord. In the name of God the Father, and of the Son, and of the Holy Spirit, and we say, Amen. And may God be with you now and forevermore. Amen and Amen. <laughs>